All right, guys. <coughs> it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. And I am talking one of these over-the-top beautiful days here in the end times paradise in the appropriately named Sunshine State. It is a winter day here in Florida. It is the last day of January. That would be Wednesday, January 31st, 2024. Good God, can you believe that one month down and I will have to say uh, January of 2024 is <laughs> a bad start to uh, to my uh, teeny weeny little life. But anyway, I, I I just told this whole story out on the dock this morning, and I was one minute from basically the punchline when some goddamn kayaker came up, started blabbing to me. So. Uh, Anyway, I will just tell the whole story over again. So I was, uh, <coughs> let's see, again, let's see how much trouble this one can get me into. So uh, I was on the mainstream media last night and reading this story out of Seattle, Washington, of all places, which I thought was a fairly liberal, open-minded city, but apparently the LGBTQ community, particularly the G community in Seattle, uh, it ha really has it, its various, I don't know, panties and boxer shorts and G-strings and <clears throat> nipple rings and whatever else completely in a wide because I, I guess what happened a few nights ago I think it was Saturday night the uh, Seattle Police Department figured they needed to protect the morals of the good people of Seattle Washington apparently so what they did was uh, well, depending on uh, who you're talking to, they they uh, raided a bunch of bars all around uh, Seattle. Uh, this, this is the story, just as it was presented on uh, in the mainstream media. So they raid a bunch of bars, apparently looking for lewd behavior, lewd behavior. So they. The, the cops uh, go busting in to these private business establishments, handing, I don't know if they were just handing out tickets or actually arresting people. Uh, I'm thinking they were just citing people for lewd behavior. So the cops are insisting that this was not targeted against uh, the LGBTQ community, particularly the G community, that they also raided, I guess, uh, a, a bunch of straight bars and probably lesbian bars looking for lewd behavior. Uh, but the only place they seemed to find lewd behavior was was in the gay male bars and uh, you, you know I'm thinking sitting here in, in the middle uh, of Trump Tardville uh, you know in the middle of this right the most right wing Trump Tard area one of the most hardcore uh, conservative areas of the country that I can go to a dungeon party uh, an hour and a half from here in Tampa. I can go to a dungeon party. I can go to an orgy. I mean, assuming I can get a female date to go with me, uh, that, that we could go to an orgy 
in, in, in a private club right here in Tampa, but in Seattle, Washington, in January of 2024, uh, the <laughs> the uh, Gestapo takes it upon themselves uh, to go busting in and, and, and busting these gay guys for lewd behavior. This what we're what this up here looks like we're driving into more of this smoke where they're doing these prescribed burns so we'll get a taste of that here in a minute so uh anyway you will not be surprised that this story uh reminded me of a memory and i don't think i've ever told this story i Humpty Dumpty Drive in my life. It was just lost to memory until I read this story. So uh, this happened in <clears throat> March of 1978 when I was 18 years old. So I'm going to go way back in Hambone history. So my 18th year was a pretty bizarre year. You know, I, I started off my 18th year, my 18th birthday. It was when I uh, had my first appointment with the psychiatrist, started on uh, antidepressants. It was the year that all of this goddamn... Uh, alien abduction crazy shit started which of course had everything to do with the antidepressants uh what else happened that year 18 it was the year that i i knocked up that lesbian i was 18 i, I went when i knocked up the 31 year old lesbian daughter of this very prominent judge federal judge in Atlanta so I, I got to go through that adventure the only abortion adventure of my life um, and but mostly what I was doing so I was taking a year off between high school and college that you actually do not need to uh, graduate from high school to go to college in Georgia so uh, I, I never graduated from high school, so I took that year, you know, the year between 17 and 18, I took a year off. The main thing I was doing was building a cabin uh, up uh, on our land in North Georgia, uh, about two hours north of Atlanta, but, you know, in the wintertime, it got pretty cold up there. So I was living back uh, <clears throat> back in Atlanta uh, to get away from the cold and obviously looking for some female company, you know, since I wasn't in school surrounded by beautiful young women. So what I did was is I signed up for these various uh, uh, a, I don't know what you call them, adult education classes, I guess, at Emory University. I mean, not for credit. They did these things at Emory. They offered all of these classes on all different subjects. So I thought this would be a great way to go meet some, uh, you know, meet some women. And uh, so my obviously being 18 years old, my number one goal of, of uh, taking all these classes was to get laid. That's what, you know, and if I happened to learn something along the way, fine, but it was, uh, it, it, I was there to meet girls is what I was there to do, was my driving force. So what I did is I signed up for several of these various creative writing class like creative writing and fiction writing and magazine article writing and 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 whatever since I was planning to spend my life as a writer anyway so I thought that would be a good segue into journalism school so I sign up for these classes 
uh, the main intention to, to meet a, a woman, uh, well, woman, you know, I was 18, so I, I get to these classes and I was extremely disappointed to find, you will not be surprised, that, that the vast majority of the people who take these classes, it, at least these writing classes, who it was, was a bunch basically of bored, lonely, middle-aged women. Like, huh, maybe I, uh... <laughs> Huh, maybe I should be signing up for some of these classes now uh, at age 64 instead of 18. Uh, come to think of it, uh, why haven't I thought of this in, in the last 10 years? But anyway, when I was 18, I was not impressed by my pool of potential women. Probably a lot of those women would, would have loved nothing better than to uh, get laid by some little haughty 18-year-old uh, stud muffin all full of himself. So uh, anyway, that didn't work out. Uh, but who I did befriend was this uh, fellow. His name was Charlie. That's all I know. And I, I have no idea what Charlie was doing taking these writing classes or whatever whatever his intention was uh, but Charlie was about 12 years older than me I guess uh, 10 or 12 years older than me he was this uh, this nice looking very personable charismatic uh, fellow uh, I mean, funny as hell, this real sharp wit and sarcastic sense of humor, uh, just a lot of fun to be around, and so I uh, befriended uh, Charlie, so I guess these, these classes probably ran for somewhere 8 to 12 weeks you know, like probably January and February and early March. So after each class, you know, it was at Emory University. So Charlie and I, we would head over to some local watering hole and have some beers and, and or pizza, whatever. And uh, so we were just natural friends. But the one thing about Charlie was... You know, I, I was 18, he was older. Uh, of course, I was just one walking hard on. You know, at 18 years old, I, I was just one walking hard on my entire life uh, revolving uh, around, you know, looking for pussy. That's what I devoted my life to. I think I've mentioned that my number one personality trait is heterosexuality. Uh, so, of course, I'm there, you know, hanging out with Charlie, but, you know, scoping all the girls, all these little Emory uh, University co-eds. And, uh, and, and, and Charlie just never seemed to have that much interest in, in, in all of these beautiful girls. He uh, he just wasn't interested in having the conversation about them. I never saw him, uh, w w never saw Charlie uh, with a woman. And I was thinking, my God, why doesn't, this, why doesn't Charlie uh, have pussy coming out of his ears? And, and, and other than being, you know, a good-looking, funny, intelligent, uh, let's call him a 30-year-old man, uh, I don't remember what his job was, but he had a very good job. Uh, you know, he had money coming in, and the other two things that Charlie had, one thing he had was the single coolest apartment uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, the coolest apartment. It was right at the corner of Peachtree 
and Ponce de Leon, um, catty corner to the old Fox Theater, and uh, it was something terrace, but he had the literally the penthouse terrace apartment where you could walk outside and there was like this concrete gazebo where you could we could sit out there and drink and and, and had the, all of downtown Atlanta spread out before us so I used to go over sometimes I would uh, go over to his apartment you know after class and whatnot and hang out in this gorgeous apartment you know, never had a never had a woman there uh, with him uh, while we'd be sitting there drinking late into the night. And the other thing that Charlie had was the single coolest. Not only did he have the coolest apartment in Atlanta, Georgia, he had the single coolest car in uh, Atlanta. What it was was a 1962 um, it was a Corvette but I think in 1962 were Corvettes still called Corvairs but anyway what it was it, it was maroon and cream colored uh, it was this uh, you know that bicolor uh, maroon and cream the thing was it was a convertible a uh, either a Corvette or a Corvair convertible uh, with the leather seats inside I mean the thing was tricked out every square inch of this car was beautiful I, I mean it was an absolute chick magnet and I'm thinking my god if I had that fucking car uh, the, the you know that goddamn car and that apartment uh, good lord uh, how much pussy uh, I, I, I would have I, I would have lines of women uh, following me around so I just kind of hung around Charlie hoping uh, that uh, maybe I could, uh, you know, get some third wheel every now and then that he might have a date with some woman uh, and he needed to get rid of some uh, third wheel and I could pick up the slack or whatever. And uh, it never happened. So anyway, that was our friendship. And... So the the classes wrapped up in the middle of March because it was time for spring break where Emory University and every other college in the country, you know, took off to Florida for spring break to uh, Panama City and Daytona Beach and Fort Lauderdale uh, were the big, uh, I guess they still are, the big uh, spring break hangouts. So anyway, you know, I didn't really, because I wasn't in college yet, I really didn't have a circle of friends from college, obviously. So I, I really wasn't thinking about going to spring break. But somehow it came up, uh, you know, after the classes and, you know, asking Charlie what he's up to, and he mentioned that he was going to Fort Lauderdale for spring break, even though he had been out of college for probably six to eight years. He wasn't a college student, but he was heading down to Fort Lauderdale for spring break. And I said, so you're driving that uh, car of yours, he goes, of course, man, uh, I'm taking my car, and I'm thinking, my God, uh, I, I, I realized, you know, he had the hotel already right on the beach, this nice hotel room reserved on the beach and everything, and, and I knew there were going to be some logistical problems that if uh, he got a date or I found they want, you know, that I was going to have to work out. But I just, uh, I just threw caution to the wind like I tend to do. And I said, so, uh, dude, do you, is, is there any way, uh, I mean, do you mind 
if uh, I come along with you. Oh, fuck, a sheriff's going that way, so I'm going to go this way. He, he, so I asked Charlie, I said, do you mind if I come along with you? To, to Fort Lauderdale, and he, and he was kind of surprised that, that, that I did that, but he goes, well, you know, he goes, you understand there's only two seats in this car, blah, 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 and I said, Charlie, I get it, I'm not going to interfere with you in your uh, dating life, you know, blah, 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 when we get down there, so he, he goes, well, what the fuck, uh, hop in, so, uh, we head down to Lauderdale, uh, so I hop into the uh, passenger seat, and off we go to uh, Fort Lauderdale for spring break, and of course the visions of sugar plums dancing in my head, going all the way down there, just thinking of, of just being in that car. Uh, even in the passenger seat, uh, that that I should get some uh, pussy out of this deal. So we, it's a long fucking drive. So we we drive all the way to Lauderdale in one haul. It took us all day. So we get there. The first night was kind of late at night. So we uh, just spent the night and get up the next day and just hang out at the beach. And of course, uh, I am sitting there slobbering. Uh, over all of these gorgeous 18 to 22 year old bikini clad little hotties and stuff so we spend the day together uh, everything is fine and then you know it starts the afternoon starts turning into sunset and Charlie starts making noises about well Ambon I he, you know, it's getting evenings coming, and and I said, dude, I said I'm not going to fucking cramp your style down here. I said I told you that. I I, I, I said, but I am curious. I said, so what are you doing tonight? <clears throat> and he said, I'm going to the Copa was his was his ultimate goal so what the copa was was the copa cabana nightclub it was like some disco club you know this was 1978 the john travolta years and uh so he tells me he's going to the copa and i said oh i said well that sounds cool uh I said, do you mind if I join you, if I hook up with you down at the Copa at some point during the night? And he looks at me like I had just suggested that I, that, that I meet him, you know, on the dark side of the moon. He looks like, he goes, you want to go to the Copa? And I, I, I said, well, I, I said, I've, I've never been to the Copa. Uh, you know, I'm down here exploring. So anyway, he, he goes, well, I don't know what time I will be there, but eventually I will, uh, I, I'll get there. So we part company. <clears throat> he heads off in, uh, in the vet. So I'm on foot now. So I'm 18 years old. The world is my oyster. Uh, I've got this hotel, this beautiful hotel room right on the beach. Uh, I, I have money in my pocket. Uh, I, I am out to conquer the fucking world. And uh, I guess the antidepressants were working at that point. So uh, I head off into the night, you know, start down the beach in the general direction of the Copa, you know, have a couple of drinks along the way. So I, I get to the Copa probably about 9 o'clock at night, I'm guessing. It was still early. It wasn't really packed. So I, I saw that Charlie's car was not in the parking lot. So I knew he wasn't there yet. And I said, oh, well, I'm going to go ahead in here and uh, and have a drink and uh, <clears throat> so I 
open the door and I'm very disappointed. It's not very full. There's probably 30 or 40 people in the Copa and, and I and I step inside the place and it's like there is this momentary hush in the in the crowd and it was like every eye was on me when I when I walked into the door that everyone was just kind of paused in their conversation and it immediately struck me I was extremely disappointed to see there was not one woman in the Copacabana not one single female it, it, it was a total sausage fest a total sausage fest not one female to be seen and I'm thinking fuck uh, you know why the hell would Charlie uh, be going to this place I said I'm assuming uh, the goddamn pussy uh, is, is going to be getting here pretty soon so uh, I, I go in there and this guy at the bar he, he, you know he's motioning uh, to me to sit down beside him and stuff so uh, you know it looked like friendly it looked like I mean it, even though it was all guys they looked pretty friendly uh, wasn't really my type of music uh, on the jukebox so I sit down and I and I order a drink and this fellow beside me is making small time chit chat and so I'm sitting there having my drink and I'm looking around the bar and there is this sign uh, posted uh, down by the you know down by the jukebox or whatnot there's this big sign and the sign says wet jockey short contest tonight uh, wet jockey short contest and you know you go up there and sign up so at midnight uh, the big excitement was going to be a wet jockey short contest instead of like a you know like a wet t-shirt contest uh, and I'm sitting there having my drink next to this fellow and I'm looking at this sign and, and I look and I look at him and I say a little bit too loudly I, I said what the fuck I, I said who in the fuck wants to go to a wet jockey short contest for God's sake oh man the entire fucking bar uh, erupted in, into laughter you talk about one of these oh my god am I here all alone moments and it was the first time in my entire life I had ever been inside a gay bar and I think I might have been in two or three of them uh, since 1978 and, and I'm thinking Jesus fucking Christ I, I'm in a fucking gay bar and then, uh, you know, the realization hit me like, motherfucker, that Charlie, my buddy, uh, for the last three months is, is gay, and he, uh, his, probably his, his main reason for coming all the way to Fort Lauderdale was to go to this fucking wet jockey short contest, and I'm thinking, oh, fuck, and, uh, so I, I knocked my drink back and uh, and ran out the door to uh, to much laughter and uh, and, and fuck it I, and, and, and I head back out and I'm just totally uh, just totally like, like mother fucker uh, so. I, I, you know, I, I wander around the beach uh, for a couple of hours thinking, what in the fuck am I going to do? So uh, I was back in the hotel room uh, before midnight, so I, 
climb into my bed. Fortunately, there were two beds in the room. I, I climb into my bed and, and, and think, What's a, 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 oh my God, is, is Charlie going to bring some guy uh, back uh, from the Copacabana, uh, is he gonna bring the winner of the of the fucking wet jockey short contest back with him? And, and uh, I, I'm just lying there, going, please God, uh, get me out of this situation. And it, I don't know what the fuck time it was, like four o'clock in the morning. I hear Charlie. Uh, very quietly sneaking into the room not to wake me up. Uh, thank God he was alone. And uh, so anyway, so he climbs into bed and goes off to sleep. So uh, I slept a few hours and uh, got up the next morning and left him a note. Uh, something has come up in Atlanta and I need to uh, go back home and uh, I snuck out the fucking door and found my way to the uh, bus station and took a fucking Greyhound back to Atlanta, Georgia and uh, anyway I was it, it, the, the whole situation but that was the uh, end of my friendship with, uh, with Charlie back then. You know, he called me a couple of times. This was back before cell phones and email. He called me a couple of times. Uh, once he got back to Atlanta and I just did not return his phone call. And then... Uh, Sometime soon thereafter that uh, I opened, I, you know, I get the weekly newspaper, Creative Loafing, and I see that Charlie was Atlanta's man of, it, I guess the man of the year, Atlanta's man of the year for, uh, I guess it would have been 1978 or something. Uh... <laughs> And that was uh, Hambone's first and last uh, <laughs> inadvertent uh, visit to a a wet jockey short contest, <laughs> and uh, I never did ask Charlie if he won the contest or not. I. I really had no interest, but uh, that was then, and this is now, and uh, the little dog and I were coming into Peanuts Sawmill to uh, murder a few more, to murder a few more uh, cypress trees. And do our part to uh, for the sixth mass extinction. Uh, good Lord, life. Some of the crazy adventures we have in life. So, if any of my gay friends are listening to this, uh, <laughs> Love you guys, but please do not ever invite me to a uh, a a wet jockey short uh, wet jockey shorts contest. I I have no more interest at age 64 than I did at age 18. But I I do think I'm going to look into uh, some of these. Uh, adult education courses at Cornell University this summer to see if I can uh, find me some lonely, bored, middle-aged women hanging out. Uh, <laughs> oh,
Jesus. All right. I gotta get busy uh, murdering cypress trees. All right. Would you look at all those corpses? These are old. Uh, they're old eco Nazi coming into Peanuts Sawmill. Man, would you look at all those dead cypress trees ready to get turned into uh, baseboards for Doomsday Trailer. All right. Get out there and enjoy doing your part for the sixth mass extinction while you still can and enjoy all those wet jockey short contest that you want to just not in Seattle Washington my guys I'm gonna go check out the dollar boards my first stop is always the one dollar board pile Looks, well, looks like it might be some fine pickings at the $1 board pile. My guys.